I'm wrong, but in the last few weeks, hasn't there been, there been information about how Russia, they're not really providing India with oil at the same price uh, cap that they were doing so before. Could we possibly see any action in UAE when it comes to uh, deals for fuel? You see, last, uh, you know, in the, in the last few years, there have been talks of uh, India, uh, you know, calling for these Gulf countries to show some, uh, you know, some discount uh, in the values when it, uh, when it uh, happens to be one of the largest buyer of food from this country. Uh, there is talk about this Asian premium that uh, since India is uh, one of the largest buyer from the Gulf countries, so they, India should get overall discount and that should not be just at the rate of international uh, crude prices. So that is one part of this overall uh, you know, uh, negotiation that India has been uh, calling for a very long time. But in the recent times, ever since the Russia-Ukraine conflict, we have seen uh, Russia has become one of the largest in fact, the largest supplier of, it, of the crude and gas to India uh, through seaborne uh, routes and about 40% or more than 40% of current import of India's crude and gas is coming from Russia. Uh, so uh, clearly Russia has emerged as one of the supplies uh, and uh, purchaser dynamics will continue on a very long-term basis. That is not sure because this is the war scenario that Russia is having currently and uh, it is also looking for an option where it can uh, it can sell its oil and generate revenues and India, India is also looking for a cheaper alternative where it can have uh, you know, crudes available for its 1.4 billion people uh, because energy happens to be one of the very crucial aspects of a very, uh, if, if you want to have a very uh, high growth trajectory, energy fuels, prices have to be low and this is something that has driven India's foreign policy in that direction where it has been able to uh, you know, convince the world also that there is a reason why it is by uh, uh, you know a cheaper oil from Russia, and uh, UAE also uh, is, is very uh, you know engaged uh, with this uh, whole peace process that Russia and Ukraine uh, should have had. Uh, there has been negotiation in the past also, uh, and we have to see how these uh, major countries or major powers of Gulf would engage with India in the past. We have seen in the 2015 when Prime Minister Modi uh, had visited uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, his uh, visit was uh, given a very uh, special, uh, you know, special status. It was an official visit. He was uh, there was uh, this highest order, highest award that UAE government had accorded to him. Uh, so that, uh, in a way, shows the kind of strength that India and UAE have been able to build over the past several decades, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the way they are looking forward to having this relationship. Currently, uh, India and UAE are having a bilateral trade about uh, 50 billion dollars. Uh, but most of it has been, uh, uh, you know, the, the part of this uh, $50 billion dollar partnership has been mostly based on the, the, the major amount of crude that India has been importing from UAE. So how to diversify uh, this, this bilateral trade dynamics is something that also that uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, Al Nayan will be discussing during the day uh, of his speech. Absolutely. Now beyond that, there's a landmark trade agreement which was inked last year, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. That's also going to be reviewed by both of the leaders during this all-important visit of the Prime Minister to the UAE. Why exactly is that going to be reviewed? Is this, are there some changes that are on the cards? Uh, you see, I mean, th there are a lot of, uh, you know, geopolitical interests, of course. We know the world is changing at a very fast pace, uh, like two years ago, uh, the kind of status quo and the crisis that the world was facing in the wake of COVID pandemic uh, has totally drained off. And now the world is currently dealing uh, with the food fertility fuel shortages because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, and the food security has become a major part of discussion in, in the bilateral uh, or the multilateral discussions anywhere around the world. Uh, also, how to ensure a, a strong security architect, a, a rules-based order around the world is also something that uh, the leaders have been uh, talking about. Uh, and, you know, th this whole fertilizer uh, shift that has happened, fertilizer shortage, uh, Russia has been a very crucial part to it. And if the fertilizers are short in supply in the international market currently, probably uh, the next harvest will be impacted by it as also overall food security scenario that the world leaders are trying to talk about will never be get solved. So how to deal with these things, how to ensure uh, a, 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 a world order where essential commodities are at least not impacted, the overall supply chain is not impacted. India has tried to position itself as a uh, as an alternative where it can provide a resilient supply chain because of the Chinese dependence of the world on the Chinese manufacturing uh, uh, capacity, 
the overall supply chain in the world has been impacted so much so that uh, in the recent times we have seen china uh, you know arm twisting certain countries or trying to influence certain for uh, certain uh, policy of certain countries uh, just to uh, just uh, to leverage uh, its ability to manufacture and be a very important pillar and part of this overall global supply chain the world has acknowledged this fact and they are now looking to have other alternatives where they can again get saving uh, scale and uh, cheap labor cost uh, manufacturing capacity and ability to scale up the overall uh, you know production capacity in a very short period of time some of the asian countries like vietnam uh, bangladesh uh, have also uh, presented themselves to be part of this overall global supply chain but with a 1.4 billion population that india currently has and a very young population that is uh, about 50% of is uh, under 35 years of age uh, and then the the kind of education and skill they have already been trained uh, the companies around the world have now started looking to india as a manuf- as a major manufacturing hub so how to uh, you know build over that uh, you know that idea is something that prime minister modi has been trying to push uh, and wherever he gets the chance to meet with the uh, with the leadership of any country uh, you know uh, engage more and more indian uh, to their countries is something that has been the issue of of discussion as well recently uh, the major world leaders that have traveled to india be it japanese prime minister or the general chancellor uh, or israelian uh, you know counterparts they have all expressed that they want to have more and more indians employable indians to come to their country and contribute to their economy this is the strength that india uh, has also uh, you know kind mm-hmm. of understood and it is the uh, prime minister modi in his uh, discussion and conversation with the world leaders is trying to push uh, for this uh, the concept that how can indians contribute to the world economy uh, you know in a, in a way and respective countries can also benefit from the skilled workforce of india at the same time abhishek is there any information about how this visit is being viewed by the west i don't know this is a very short visit uh, of course uh, west would like to engage uh, for india to engage with ue because ue has to ue has had a very uh, you know very obvious inclination towards the western uh, strategic forces at least if not mm. in terms of democratic value or other social uh, you know context if you can see frankly ue has been well uh, regarded as a very close partner to the west so in that context uh, west would love to have a very close partnership of ue and india because uh, india uh, west is also trying to woo india for its multiple uh, reasons for the very reason that india is uh, trying to increase its defense expenditure defense budget and uh, you know there are so many countries which are eyeing to this opportunity to ensure that they are able to sell maximum number of defense equipment to india because of the security needs india india is increasing its defense purchases so uh, we have seen recently uh, french president or the uh, france also announcing this uh, rafale deal with india we have recently seen indian aviation sector uh, you know you know announcing this major multi Hundred billion dollar deals with uh, U.S. companies and the uh, U.K. companies. Uh, so the overall economic growth that India has seen and the way it is projected to grow in the next couple of decades, that has given a kind of uh, position where the West is looking at India as a very bright spot where it can invest, where it can trustfully grow. Uh, you know, in terms of economic collaboration or the scientific collaboration or the major, uh, you know, partnership of technology is something also that that is being talked about. So. west is very keen on having a very good relationship in with india collaborating with in all the sphere and uh, if it happens to be you know engaging with another of its ally like uae or in other gulf countries that course uh, it is something that is not going to uh, raise some eyebrow but it will be seen as a as a as a only you know growing uh, partnership with with their allies absolutely abhishek thank you so much for joining us and telling us more about the significance of this visit Uh, another little fact for our viewers the uae was the first country in the gulf where rupee the indian response to mastercard and visa networks uh, had been launched now we're going to continue to track the